Okay, so hey guys, welcome back to the Cartoon House modeling series. So this is part two, and we're gonna go ahead and start creating the door for this um, little house, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and create the top arc for the house, okay? So the first thing that we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and create a polygon pipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and it will create one right in the center of my grid because my interactive creation is turned off. So once we have that, we're gonna go ahead and have a look at the channel box um, inputs, okay? So I'm just gonna press F to zoom onto my pipe. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go to um, the channel box and make sure you have that up. You can press Control A to switch in between the attribute editor and the channel box. And here, if you notice, you have a poly pipe um, section on, under the inputs panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down. And as you can see, every primitive that you go ahead and create, it will have an input um, channel. And what you can do in here is you can go ahead and play around with its thickness and so on. So you can go ahead and change the thickness to let's say two or 1.5 or 0.5 and it will go ahead and change that. You can also go ahead and change the subdivisions to something let's say 20 and so on. Now when you go ahead and duplicate the object though, so let's go ahead and press Control D to duplicate, if you notice the inputs panel of this object is now disappeared. So just bear that in mind that it will only work for the objects that are the primitives that you create. But as soon as you go ahead and duplicate that object, um, that's not going to have the inputs anymore. So let's just go back to the inputs and let's go ahead and try to change this thickness to something more um, suitable for us. Now if you notice that due to the fact that our little slider here is pretty um, fast, we can't really control it nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it down, okay, until this little uh, corner is around there, okay. So I think it was there by default. We're going to go ahead and turn it all the way down there and then click that icon again. And now all we can do is we go ahead and select the thickness. We can go ahead and control it a lot nicer. So I'm just selecting the thickness and the middle mouse button dragging to go ahead and do that. Okay. So this is basically what we need. So once I selected this arc, what we're going to go ahead and do is because we only need the top half of this, I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. So I'm gonna go ahead to faces. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of those faces, okay? So now we've only got, um, we are now only left with this top arc. So once we have that, all we need to do is we're gonna to have to go ahead and rotate this. So let's go ahead and press E on our keyboard and I'm only gonna go ahead and drag on this handle to go ahead and rotate it roughly in the direction that I need it. And then if I go into my channel box up here, you can go ahead and see that in the rotate X, we went ahead and rotated this 78 degrees. Now we know if I rotate this 90 degrees, it will be perfectly um, lined up to where we need it. So once that we rotate this and cut it, let's go ahead and go into our front view. Okay, now let's go ahead and position this uh, somewhere where we need it. Now the first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna turn on wireframe and shaded mode just so I can see my objects a little bit better. So you can go ahead and press that icon to go ahead and do that. Okay, so once I have that, I'm gonna select my object and we're gonna go ahead and scale this down because it seems to be really big for what we need. So once we scaled it down, I'm gonna move it roughly where I think our door is gonna be. Okay, so I know that our window will come up to here somewhere. And maybe this is a bit too wide, so let's go ahead and scale it down this way. Okay, so that looks about right. Let's go ahead and move it where I want it. Okay, so that looks great. Let's go ahead and put, um, scale this guy down a little bit this way as well, so it's not as thick. And now I'm gonna go ahead and just move it roughly in the position, okay? So once we have that, uh, we need to go ahead and create the uh, bottom half uh, or the right and left side of the door and the bottom, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and use our extrude tool again. But first we're gonna go ahead and select this edge loop 
and that edge loop by holding down shift. Okay, let me just deselect that object. Okay, so holding down shift, I select both of those loops. Okay, we go back into our front view. Okay, now let's go down and hit extrude. Press W on our keyboard to go ahead and move that. I'm going to go ahead and drag this down all the way here. Now, if you remember, we can go ahead and snap things to the grid. So why not go ahead and do that when our house is already snapped to the bottom of the grid? So while we go ahead and select the axes we want to snap, okay, which is this guy, hold down X on our keyboard, and you see the pivot on this will change. Middle mouse button to the um, grid that we want to go ahead and snap it to. And as you can see, it will snap up there perfectly for us. So once we have that, all we need to do is just create the connection in between these two pieces. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you also notice, uh, we do have a hole here, and this is a fairly simple hole that we can go ahead and fill up. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that object and go to mesh, fill hole. And because it's a simple hole, it will fill it up for us very nicely, okay? So once we have that, let's go ahead and add in an edge loop around here. So that will allow us to go ahead and extrude the face here to drag all the way across. So let's go ahead and go to our insert edge loop. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've reset the tool. So I undo that with Control Z, reset my tool, go back into insert edge loop tool, and let's go ahead and add a guy, add a little edge loop across here, okay? So once we have that, let's go ahead and select that face. Let's go ahead and extrude that, okay? So I'm just pressing W. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this across. Now, what we need to go ahead and do is we need to go ahead and um, connect uh, these two pieces up, okay? So what we're obviously going to have to go ahead and do is we need to go ahead and add in an edge loop over this side as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Now to make sure that this is perfectly lined up while this edge loop is still selected, I'm going to go ahead and select that axis, hold down V on my keyboard, okay, and going to go ahead and snap it to, uh, to this word around here, okay. And that will make sure that these guys are perfectly lined up. Now before we can go ahead and merge these points together, what we need to go ahead and do is we need to go ahead and delete these two faces, otherwise they will go ahead and cause us some issues, okay? So now that these faces are now not there anymore, we can go ahead and use our Merge Vertex tool, okay? So we're going to go ahead and select that. And I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag the vert that I want to connect, okay? So I want this guy to connect to that guy, so I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and snap it there and as you can see it's connected so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for these okay so we have our door frame created let's go ahead and now we can go ahead and move this into position so let's go ahead and move this in here okay so that looks like a great door frame but what we've forgotten to do or what we haven't done yet is if you notice that we go ahead and smooth this it will turn out like crazy. So let's go ahead and add in the supporting edges um, for this. So you can go ahead and smooth this and it will keep its shape and it will look really nice and smooth. So now that we already moved this into position, I don't really want to move this out and then add in the edge loops and then move it back in. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and isolate this mesh. So you can go ahead and select this object, okay? And then go ahead and click this little icon up here and that will go ahead and isolate um, this piece of mesh. So if we go ahead and click this again, it will unisolate. We can go ahead and isolate more than one piece at a time by shift selecting and then hit in isolate, but we don't have anything else in the scene at the moment. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and isolate this so we've got more space to work with. And let's go ahead and start adding in the edge loops. So again, the, each edge, I'm gonna need two supporting edges on either side. So let's go ahead and do that using my insert edge loop tool. Now, for this, it might be a good idea that you go ahead and go to your insert edge loop tool, 
and go in multiple edge loops and have two, okay? Because we know for a fact that we're gonna need an edge loop here and we're gonna need an edge loop there. So instead of using our insert edge loop and adding them in manually, let's go ahead and add in two. And while these two are still selected, use your scale tool, okay? And scale them out in this angle, okay? Or this axis, and that will give us really nice and clean edge loops okay so you can go ahead and do that again on this side as well so let's add two there and this might not work as well okay so let's just press scale and if you notice that's not going to work for us very well so for the, in that case we can go ahead and just use uh, a single edge loop okay so let's go ahead and do that relative distance so let's go ahead and start adding in Oops, the edge loops across here. So I know we're gonna need one here. Gonna need one here. Okay. For this piece we could go ahead and add multiple edge loops. Okay, so there's two there. Just press scale on my keyboard, scale them up. Okay, and this multiple edge loop is just an advanced technique. You don't really have to go ahead and do that. You can go ahead and use the single edge loop all the way across, um, but over time, this will go ahead and save you some time. So it's a good, it's a good idea to go ahead and get used to that. Okay, but let's go ahead and just carry on with the single edge loop. So I know we're going to need one on the inner edge here as well. Okay, and I know you're going to need one off either side of this as well. So it might seem uh, a bit complicated at first, but trust me, uh, you'll get used to it really quickly and you'll have no problems of knowing where to add in these loops. Okay, so once you think that you added everything in, there's no shame in go ahead and checking out if you do. Uh, so let's go ahead and smooth it. Okay, turn off this guy. And that looks really nice. It doesn't look like we missed out any loops. Okay, let's go ahead and have a look again. Okay, that looks really nice and smooth. That looks really good. Okay, we haven't missed out any edge loops. Now here you'll notice that this supporting edge slides up all the way here. And again, that's because of these long faces here. So you can go ahead and just split this guy up so I'm going to go ahead and use three edge loops like so and I can go ahead and spread them out a little bit more okay and do the same thing on this side I'm just spreading them out a little bit more and I'll just go into my front view to make sure that each side roughly lines up okay so let's go ahead and smooth this and now you'll notice Okay, that this supporting edge stays where it's supposed to be instead of sliding all the way up. Okay, because we have these extra supporting edges that will stop that from happening. Okay, so we got our door frame created. That looks really good. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in the uh, extra little bits here that we um, have on the door. And they are just basically simple cubes. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a simple cube. Okay, scale it, scale it this way, scale it down, just roughly blocking out the size that I need. Okay, and basically this is the shape, it's just a very simple rectangle. We can go ahead and move some bits around, so we can go ahead and grab this square to move it down, maybe make it a bit less uniform. But let's go ahead and quickly add in all the supporting edges for this, so we can go ahead and smooth this and put it in place. So relative distance, adding my edge loops, very simple, okay, and a couple here as well, and on the other side, and we should be finished, okay, let's go ahead and smooth it, okay, so that looks great, let's go ahead and go into our front view, turn on my wireframe, let's go ahead and move this yeah, maybe scale it down a little bit more. Scale it down this way. Okay, let's go ahead and move it in. Move it in a little bit more. 
And let's go ahead and duplicate it. So we have two there, okay? That's great. So let's go ahead and create our door handle next. This should be fairly simple to do. We're going to go ahead and use a um, polygon torus to go ahead and do that. So I just made simple primitive. Let's go into the inputs again. So we're going to go ahead and turn down the section radius to make this a little bit thinner. Maybe a little bit more. Scale this down. And again, we're going to go ahead and cut this in half. So go into our, sorry, top view. Let's go ahead and select this. Go to faces. Now what we do want to do though before we go ahead and do this is let's just turn down some of these divisions because we're going to go ahead and smooth this anyway. I'm just going to turn it down to 12 and turn that down to 12 as well. Okay, so that's a little bit better now. Let's go ahead and select again all of those faces, delete them, so we're only left with one half. I'm pressing F to zoom in on the object, so if you go crazy, you can go ahead and select an object and press F and that will go ahead and bring it into the frame. So let's go ahead and move this to where we need it. Again, we're going to have to go ahead and rotate this, so I'm going to press E and rotate it. And then have a look in my channel box, rotate it 90. Okay, and I'm going to have to rotate it this way, 180. Okay. Let's go ahead and go into our side view. Move this roughly in place, back into my perspective. Push that in a little bit and let's go ahead and scale this down a bit more. Okay, so there's a door handle. And now for this shape, we can go ahead and smooth it and as you can see, it will keep its shape really nicely. Let's go ahead and Scale it down this way to make it a bit more round. Okay, so that looks great. There's a door handle done. Um, so this is it for this part, guys. In the next couple of parts, we're going to go ahead and create the back plane for this. So we can go ahead and apply a separate shader for it, for our door. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, create the windows and then we'll go from there, okay? So make sure you guys like this part of the tutorial and share it with your friends and I'll see you guys in the next part.